is I am sitting here with a couple of the guys from the band Twin. We're sitting here in Gothenburg. I've got John and I've got Ife, a guitar and bass. Yes. Yes. Okay, cool. So you guys have a great rock sound. You have a CD out now called Wasteland. For the viewers that don't know you yet, let them know who you are, where'd you guys come from, kind of how you got into the, to the rock that you're doing. Together. Uh, it was 2010. <laughs> yeah, well, the thing is, it was alcohol. Of course, yeah. I know the story. <laughs> Many great bands. Yeah, uh, Linus and uh, the drummer and Oscar, the singer and the frontman, is not here today. They were actually jamming uh, one night and they were like one guy short, so they kidnap kidnapped me from the party. So I uh, had one beer, I think. <laughs> no. Uh, anyway, so we started jamming like 3 a.m. in the morning and and we said, this sounds good, cool. let's start a band, and there we go. And three weeks later, we had our first gig, and it was a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> we sucked. So did the disaster, did it make you want to stop at first, or did it actually give you the drive to move forward? Uh, move forward, of course. We had an awesome time, you know, and we got actually some good words from, uh, I think it was the guitarist in Flames. He was sitting there and said, like, oh, really good sound. We're like... What? He's we lying. <laughs> yeah, he's lying. Yeah. Yeah. He's drunk. <laughs> he was lying, probably. <laughs> 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 no, but it, yeah, it, we we just want to keep going from there, and uh, we be doing this for eight years. And if he just joined us and put a whole nother dimension to the band, so yeah, we're in, from Gothenburg, obviously. <laughs> so a lot of the great Swedish rock and metal does come from Gothenburg. I mean, you got it all over the country, of course, but really, when you talk about metal. People would say Sweden. Their first thing they is Gothenburg. So. Of course, there is a sound called the Gothenburg sound. We are we are not in there. Well, well maybe like ten percent of what we do is sprinkled with the Gothenburg sound. Our music is more American than anything. It comes from blues. Yeah. So what we do is we play very stinky, distorted blues music. If you like break it down, you look what you're playing. It's all the blues scale up and down. But. So yeah, when I joined, I joined the band. What was it, December? No, January uh, this year. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they had the band had one guy coming in and out, uh, switching on bass. Yeah. So he played guitar, then he played bass. This other guy played guitar, <laughs> and that's it. So I'm like, how many bass players? One, two. So I'm yeah, the third. So almost yeah. for ten years, intact band. So these guys they know each other since. Yeah, ten, yeah, yeah, ten more years. Than ten years yeah. back. Me and Linus, the drama, actually started jamming before we started Twin. So we, we got a pretty good connection before. And Oscar actually moved in above uh, Linus. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he was he heard it through the ceiling, you know, he was jamming and riffing and stuff like this. So eventually he just knocked on the door. Tch -tch. You, you want to go and jam or do play a song? Yeah. He's like, yeah, whatever, man. And, and that's how I started. The same night they called me and <laughs> I joined. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So fast forward a little bit here. Yeah. You guys had an EP out and then you've got a new CD out called Wasteland. Yeah. From the first EP to the new CD, how do you feel the music's changed? Well, uh, the dynamics of uh, I think, is more melody to Wasteland than uh, to Clench, I think it was called. Uh, uh, and Clench was actually recorded in a real, really beautiful studio in uh, Kungel, just outside uh, uh, Gothenburg. Bands like Moustache and Hardcore Superstar and, and stuff like that have been playing there, so we thought, well, this is the thing for us. But uh, it was almost a bit too much straightforward. We wanted some more melody to it and stuff like that, so that's, I think, what we added to Wasteland. And Wasteland actually quite old songs. Uh, like some of the songs are like 15 years old, uh, but he got some new lights on it and some new hands on it and started to sound great. So he said like, oh. Like almost, I remember this documentary I was watching with Bon Jovi and they recorded the first album in like a couple of weeks and it, it was smooth, no problem, banged it out. And then the, the second album, they had like, they were supposed to record in two months and they had nothing. And the, the studio guy who worked there, he said, this, is, this happens to all the bands. Your first record takes you like maybe 10 years to write, mm -hmm. hey, whatever. But your second album, you're standing there like, oh, you're writing on the su success of your first album, and now you have to write an equally good album in two months or six months. That's not happening. But for the people listening, they never heard the songs before. 
So if a song is 15 years old for him, for, for him it's like two minutes old. But yeah, yeah, we're writing some new stuff now. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, I know. Uh, that's pr pr pretty much it, actually. That's the biggest difference uh, between Wasteland and, and, and Clench is uh, a lot more melody, you know. And yeah, Clench is much dirtier. <laughs> Yeah. That's the way I like it, more <laughs> dirt. And the Wasteland is a bit more polished. Yeah. But the next one is gonna be it's gonna be pretty hard. <laughs> twin hard. New twin hard. <laughs> New twin hard, yeah. Well and that's funny because before we started the interview, if we and we were talking that you were in Thrash. Yeah. You know, that you played for Thrash for quite a bit. And what did you do? What were you doing the same rock, John, or were you doing No, I the co complete opposite actually. Uh, uh, when I started playing guitar I was one of these guys, you know, just sitting alone, you know, and trying to do everyone else's solo. So I played a lot of Ingve Malmsteen and stuff like that. So it's completely different what we do today. And I'm actually learning so much with Twin, you know, because this basic blue stuff, and st it, it's, yeah, it's a completely new ground for me, you know, because I'm, I'm used to just go as fast as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Until you don't hear the tunes anymore. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, so then I started listening to uh, more of Metallica, you know, getting into it, you know, because I started listening to it when I was like nine years old and it was awesome then. Then I grew away from it and I got back to it. And yeah, and yeah, I guess Thrash has been there all the time as well, somehow, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So for music wise for you do either of you or both of you what album was it that you heard the first time can you remember that you heard something that said I want to play bass or I want to play guitar that really just kind of brought you in For and me personally I became a bass player out of necessity like that's that's the most cliche answer ever we had a three piece when I was maybe 18 19 or something <laughs> we were like we're going to we're going to we're going to do this okay cool so we graduated and we started like doing music like full time and I wanted to be James Hetfield, play guitar and sing. That was like, that was my thing always. So we got in the rehearsal, rehearsal spot and we have a drummer, da, da, da. And like, yeah, it sounds great with this drummer and this guitar player. So are we gonna look for another guitar player for six months or some shit like that? And have me, uh, uh, or have me play bass because I was singing in the band already. I was like, ah, give me that fucking bass guitar. The minute I played it, I was like, this is my instrument. I'm never doing anything else. I hate guitars. Guitars <laughs> are for girls, in my opinion. I'm just kidding. I, I think guitars, I have big hands, as you maybe can see. For me, playing guitar, I have to focus and have my fingers, you know, close with whatever. But when I play bass, I can just be myself. And I think I... I you can I, use I, your whole arm. I, I do. <laughs> we played yesterday, I was like... I, I was playing torque, I think. That's a whole lot of like banging on the bass just to get that groove out. And I was like, while I was playing, shit, I didn't bring my spare bass to this gig. If the string breaks and we're halfway through, I have to take it easy. So I just put my hand down again and like plucked it more. <laughs> but yeah, for me, there is no other instrument than bass. That's, mm. I'm, I was born to play that and I never quit. It's, it's, what is it now? <laughs> Many years. <laughs> well, Many. it's funny that you say that the guitars are for girls because I don't think Nita Strauss or Ida or Lita Ford, any of them would ever say that's not right because no. they are amazing guitar players. So Nita yeah. rules. She's yeah. A, yeah. I love I love her playing. I watched them play live twice with Alice Cooper, and she's out there doing exactly what she has to do. She's great. She's great. Absolutely. Yeah. So John, how did you come about guitar? Well, you, you're not gonna think that I'm gonna give back to Ife here, but. It's actually true. I love, I, I set my mind to it when I heard Injustice for All for the first time. And that was the, actually my first album I ever heard as a kid. Uh, I think I was uh, like seven years old or eight years old. Uh, and I heard Injustice for All and I was just sitting next to the stereo and said, I'm going to play guitar and I'm going to play in a band. And that's it. <laughs> and you have a tattoo to show it. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. Awesome. And uh, we all know the sound of uh, uh, Injustice for All. Yeah, no bass. I, I, yeah, no bass. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> but for me, to answer the goddamn question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember the, the question. first <laughs> song that got me all riled up, I was maybe se between seven and nine. I was watching 
the Terminator movie, the, the second one. And I heard, and then the bass, I was like, oh, that's a cool guitar sound. Hello, what, what the, I'm a kid, I don't know. <laughs> so the first song was You Could Be Mine with Guns N' Roses. That was the first. And like a couple of years later, I hated Guns because I was into Metallica. It was those two camps. They were they, they were T-shirts from that tour that Metallica and Guns did together. They were saying, uh, fuck Guns N' Roses, here comes Metallica. I was wearing that shit with Proud. But today, I love Guns. And now I'm learning like, so this is why I love this music because the bass was so prominent. Uh, Guns, Aerosmith, I listened to a lot of Aerosmith when I was a kid, and that's super logical because Guns wouldn't exist without Aerosmith. Axel said that like 20 times. Yeah. So for me, it was Guns, Aerosmith, Metallica, Pantera, of course, and then a bunch of death metal and stuff like that. But yeah, Guns N' Roses, Duff McKagan, you're the man. <laughs> Hell yeah. We'll take it. Duff's one of ours, so, you know. Yeah, Duff Seattle. Rules. I love Duff. Yeah, he's an amazing yeah, artist, true. yeah. yeah. <laughs> so tour-wise, you guys have been out doing some shows. What do you have planned for this year? Yeah, well, this year we had a, actually a, quite a busy spring, so uh, if you here just got a kid. Uh, yeah, a week ago, thank you. Yeah. So w we did a last show yesterday, so now we're actually just booking for uh, for... Uh, next upcoming fall and start working on some new tunes because we got Ife now with his new bass sound and we really want to release something with Ife on it. Uh, we got this uh, single coming out in a couple of weeks called Forgotten that with, with Ife of course and you can immediately hear the different sound uh, and it's a uh, more power i would say yeah. more balls yeah more balls yeah uh so yeah uh, we're planning for this fall actually uh, starting to booking uh, yes so this summer we're just gonna chill you know yeah. enjoy being with our families and you know get a breather <laughs> yeah, absolutely and it's you know you're going into festival season you gotta have some fun yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> it's the culture here in europe so it's yeah. amazing yeah oh yeah exactly so yeah but we're really looking forward to recording uh, recording the new stuff because if we got when he joined the band he said ah oh, i got i got some songs you want to hear it and he got like 20 songs or something like that <laughs> and we're like wow yes we're gonna do something about that and yeah, so we're starting uh, playing it and you know shaping it together. You know, he comes up with an idea, and we together started to shape it to sound like twin, but you know, like a new twin because we obviously we want to make progress as as musicians, like everyone want to do. So yeah, uh, we're really looking forward to recording that stuff. So we're doing an EP, right? Yeah. Yeah. We have decided to do an EP. We have four songs. One is already recorded. The forgotten single yeah and we have written and we arranged three more we are super satisfied with them yeah. so what we have left now is lyrics and recording yeah so that this summer is going to be for me personally like I, I don't like taking time off i can't take time off from making music i made a song two days ago i didn't tell the guys because <laughs> you know maybe ah oh, shit this one is better than this let's take this one we are happy with the ones we have if i I think we're gonna record some more stuff in the in the winter, at least write more stuff. Yeah. Because there is music for an album, no problem. So yeah, and it works so great mm. because the things I write, they are not so much like bluesy uh, stuff that we do in Twin, but when I bring in the riffs, they automatically sound like Twin because Twin are playing the riffs, and we do rearrange. I come in with a like a done complete song intro outro versus everything and we move stuff around cut stuff out and it becomes awesome twin music so when you guys are in your recording process do you lay your tracks on separately come together in a room together and do it all at once i mean there's some bands a weird thing that worked where they you're in one room at the same time and you record and it sounds fantastic when it's laid out or is it just kind of no for, for, the, for the forgotten song we did it was drums first i think we put the bass on last yeah, we yeah, do. we yeah, did. usually you do drums first and bass and then guitars and leads and, and so vocals. So we did the drums first, l laid down some guitars, put the bass on, and then Oscar did the the lyrics. We haven't even read the lyrics nor heard them. <laughs> no. And when when we he recorded, was like, this is fucking great. He oh, that was that was a great. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Like surprise. <laughs> yeah, here were some great lyrics, dude. But for, for some reason that. 
always been the case with Twin, you know, when we had new songs and stuff like that. But I remember uh, a song called uh, Monster Truck. I think it's track number four or something like that. Anyhow, so when we recorded it, we did that, that as a single before we did Wasteland. So we went into the studio and me and Lin Linus never heard this uh, lyrics, nothing. <laughs> and I got, I got there like six hours late or something like that. So they already done the... Uh, uh, everything. Everything. They're recording. <laughs> so they just they, they just hit play. And I was standing there listening. I was like, yeah, that's, yeah, that's fucking right. <laughs> uh, and yeah, we yeah. finished the set with Master Truck. It's a master fucking song. Yeah. But, uh, 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 you know, the EP, the clench, yeah. that it's recorded live in the studio. Yeah. We, yeah, we all stood in one room and just hit record and played. Awesome. Yeah. I didn't know that. You no, did? No, I do. No, I <laughs> no you do. <laughs> yeah. Why are you again? <laughs> You're the trumpet, no? Yeah, uh, so that is a live recording, actually. Uh, we've worked with this awesome guy called Tobias Lindell. Uh, and he, yeah, he knows his stuff, so he helped us. Tobias rules. He yeah. has a studio in, uh, in Thailand, yeah, right? He yeah, recorded Avatar in Thailand for their, I don't know which album, but yeah, well, some album. <laughs> yeah, cool. <clears throat> so tell me about twin videos. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, the thing is about our videos, we do everything ourselves. Because, uh, you know, we musicians, we have no money all the time. <laughs> it's not, it always broke, right? So uh, when we were doing our first video, I was like, oh, we can't afford to pay anyone. So I have to learn to do this. So we learned and we've been doing our own videos ever since. Uh, everything from Torque, uh, Monster, Monster, Monster Truck, uh, I, I can't remember so all now. <laughs> you're, not a, you're not a videographer then, so you basically we became, picked it up and you became... We became by necessity. That's and I how think it's important because I think a lot of bands forget that people still want to see a video and of course. people like to put out these lyric videos now and I'm not a huge fan of lyric videos because if I want to watch a video I want to watch people doing something really yeah. cool to the music and mm. just we, reading we, the lyrics is not fun. We sometimes mix the both together. Right, right. So we have like the lyrics behind us and you can see the people play. So I yeah. think yeah, it's a, um, the thing is it tells a lot about the band I think as well, you know. Uh, it's, a, it's like an artistic uh, <laughs> continuation to them. You have the music and the, the booklet and the CD and stuff. And then when you do a video, you show people like what, what, like how the song looks like. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, check out the videos, they're fucking cool. Yeah. See, and that was the generation I grew up on MTV when MTV actually yeah. still played videos yeah. with the Headbangers Ball and that was a section mm. carved out for rock and metal and it was really killer videos and they would talk to the artists in between and you get to see more about a band than what just the music is doing or an interpretation that you may be thinking something in your head of what you would think you would see yeah. and the artist does something totally different and blows yeah. you away. Yeah. So, yeah. And then I guess the last question I have, people are going to watch, they're going to hear what you guys have had to say. What do you have to say, final word to the fans out there? Get them to come take a listen. Well, be patient. Uh, there's a lot more coming, you know. Uh, uh, the things you heard about from Twin is just the tip of the iceberg, I think. Uh, we're at the turning point, I think, uh, right now in our, like, in Twin's career, if you look at that way. I think it's a lot more coming. It's a lot more coming. We haven't done, like, even one percent what we want to do with this band uh, uh, and this fall you know with, with new logos new music and everything is like blah yeah okay. well thank you so much for your time thank you thank you for coming Absolutely. from the america to interview a band in the swedish <laughs> yeah in sweden we should go oh, very nice sweden is the metal and rock mecca yeah. so you have to do it yeah absolutely <laughs> actually my biggest biggest uh, you know uh, thing to check you know on my bucket, bucket list, list. I, I really need to go and do some shows uh, in America that's for my, sure yeah that's my for uh, sure so we're yeah. heading there and you know and that's funny you say that because we have a real love for the Swedish metal and rock scene and we're like constantly looking on the list for who's coming to town and yeah we're getting more and more and more Swedish bands that come and it's just we know that it's not financially feasible for a lot of bands to come but mm. we're getting more and more and we're so excited every time we see another artist take a chance on us so we I'm gonna put this out here too. If somebody who's in a band happens to check this out, yeah. Yeah. please think of America's because we want you guys to come out to North America, Canada, and USA. We yeah. love the, the music you guys are doing, so yeah. please consider us. Yeah, or, uh, we will. Yes, the thing, the funny thing is, uh, uh, 
I look, looked at some statistics and most of the traffic is from America yeah. listening to Twin. So yeah, we most we, we need to go there. <laughs> we, we have no we choice. We will come, for <laughs> sure. Yeah. Most probably do like a package thing, get a couple of bands from here, get the money together, talk to some people o over there, over the pond, <laughs> oh, and we will make it happen, for yeah. sure, yeah. no That's doubt. Well, thank you again for your time. Thank you very much.